Well, we've just reached a pretty happy milestone today. The framing is more or less finished. Uh, at this point, I'm now waiting for the metal to arrive. And the metal will go on the roof and it'll go on the wall. And there's all kinds of extra pieces in there that form flashing and protection for the rest of the building. We live on an island here, it's Prince Edward Island, and everything has to come to the island. So it's not uncommon to wait a period of time from the time you order something, but you have to try to stay ahead of the uh, game. For example, the trusses took over eight weeks from the time I ordered them until they arrived. So that was one of the first things I did. I ordered the trusses before I even got a hold of a contractor with a bulldozer to excavate the site because I knew that would be a, a long time. 10 days waiting for steel, that's, that's, not, that's not a long. I, I just had a friend who told me he's framing a house in the city and they just told him it'll be a 10 week delay until the windows are ready. On a, on a separate note, yesterday the wind was gusting over 70 kilometers an hour and I didn't do any filming uh, while I was finishing up the carpentry but it was a very very trying day on account of I would set the ladder up I would turn my back to get the uh, nail gun or the piece of material I was going to work with by the time I turned around again the ladder was on the ground it was just really trying dealing with those wind gusts but the nice thing is the building is all braced and it's prepared for that kind of event. Now I'm going to take, I think, one or two days off and just regroup and start thinking about the next step. Now for a change of pace, we're going to prepare our garden site for next year. Mrs. Rover and I are very passionate about working with nature to help us homestead. So we have no intention whatsoever of tilling this marvelous soil. Instead, we'll be using a method that we've used several times in the past. It starts off with, number one, you get a nice dressing of manure put over your garden area. And as you can see from how well the grass is growing in this area, that it's really made an improvement right off the go. But that's not good enough to plant any seeds. So the next step is to put some organic material down. So in this case, we're using cardboard. Now don't forget to also remove the staples and the tape from the cardboard. Lay it down over the ground, and this will act to uh, bring the worms to the surface, and they will eat all the thatch, all the grass, and at the same time give you wonderful fertilizer. The second part is you have to really block out the sun. So we're using black tarps that we got from uh, a lumber yard. So lumber arrives on the island fully wrapped in these lumber wraps. They pull them off the lumber, they sell the lumber, the wraps go to a landfill. So in our case, we're taking those tarps from them, we're giving them a second use, and, and in this case it's blocking out the light and it makes the worms and the other bacteria below the surface very happy to come up higher and break up that ground, preparing it for what will be the most marvelous garden next year. You want to walk on the cardboard? So I'll just put one pen in and see where we are. Okay. go that way a little bit. Okay. Just I'll just I'll move this up.
Well, we're trying out two different types of staples to hold this fabric down. We're using these 12 inch aluminum heavy gauge staples. They're the big ones. And then there's a smaller, lighter gauge version that are straight metal. I can tell already that the larger aluminum heavy gauge are holding up much better than the light gauge metal. And in addition, the light gauge metal will rust over time. Our homestead is very close to the Atlantic Ocean and as such we do get a fair bit of wind. So in order to keep the tarps down and in place over this uh, winter period that we'll have them down, we're going to use some of the leftover concrete which we turned into little paving stones. But they're a pretty good weight and they'll assist us in holding the tarps down through the nastiest of winds. This is a good time to show you the planting of the trees that we've been doing. Now trees are important because they're a major infrastructure part of your homestead and they take years to grow. So we're planting a variety of fruit, nut and just decorative trees around the perimeter of the property. So this is the apple tree that we're planting. We're going to plant it right here and it's going to be the first of several trees that we will plant over the next uh, coming uh, years and as the orchard develops. So this is the first tree and this will mark the beginning spot. So I'm going to dig a hole here that's just a little bit bigger than the pot size. Then we're going to take the soil out, amend it, and then put the tree in just so it's a little bit proud of the actual ground. And that way over the next year the soil will compact a bit and the tree will end up exactly where we want it. All right, time to get to work. Alright, so the, the hole I've uh, dug out is about a third bigger in diameter than the actual pot and I've removed the sod and put it off to the side because that's going to go to the compost heap. That'll be used, uh, we'll, uh, that'll be used for the garden in about a year. Now I'm going to dig down about four or five inches deeper than the pot itself and all the way around and that soil I'll remove to the side and then we'll mix in some rotted sheep manure that we purchased along with some peat moss and make make a nice rich uh, humus uh, soil for the tree to expand and grow in over the years. All right, time to get to work. So we have a hole dug right now and it's about six inch six inches deeper than the apple tree itself. So I've just popped the pot in the hole just to make sure that we've got the sizes right. Now I'm just going to take it out and then we'll fill the hole with about six to eight inches of a combination of peat moss, uh, sheep manure and some of the original soil, about into thirds. And we'll mix that together. We'll put the tree back in and then we'll fill around the edges with an improved soil just like I described. All right. All right. So this is peat moss. Put a little bit in there. Sheep manure. This is the first time we've ever had to purchase manure, and it's because we're just starting out on this particular property. But moving forward, we will always be relying on the manure that the animals on our property provide us with. And now we're going to mix in some of this lovely red soil. I made sure that the top soil is all in this side of the pile and the the soil from the bottom of the hole which is shale like is on this side and we won't use it and of course the sod is put off here and we won't be using that at all that'll be going to the compost pile
Okay, that's nicely mixed up right now. We'll just test our depth. Okay, so that can use at least two more inches. So we're going to put a little more of everything in. Or peat moss. manure okay Okay, that's looking great. It's all mixed. And we're at a good height. So now it's time to take the tree out of the pot, put it in, and then we'll surround it with the same sort of soil that we've mixed up for the for the hole. There we go, we have the tree centered in, in the hole. The tree is a little bit higher than the uh, grade, so we're in good position now. The soil that we mixed into this bucket is a combination of the sheep, uh, sheep manure, a bit of our own red soil, and also the peat moss. So we'll just fill in the sides. Okay, so we've got the, the apple tree in the ground. I've, uh, I've filled it up with improved soil and then I've created a berm around the edge using some of our leftover soil. I've compacted the soil lightly around the tree and the main reason for that is we get a lot of high winds uh, here so that'll, that'll keep the tree from flopping around and just falling over. So now it's key to make sure that you get a lot of water put in. So we've brought some water from home and we'll water in around the tree. And don't be afraid to give it lots and lots of water. For those of you who are curious, this is a Gala semi-dwarf apple tree, which we know grows very well in our environment. So this ground is just sucking up this water, but we've had a bit of a drought this year. So we'll let that soak in and then we'll come back in half an hour and we'll give it some more water. So here we're planting some American walnuts. We, uh, we have four of them. Now these are particular pots that tree seedlings come in. This, this seedling is, it, uh, it actually is only 
a few months old, but it's it's done really well. So we're going to put it in this hole. Same thing applies. You want to put it in the hole so that the top of the pot is in line with the grade of your land. So this is lower by about two inches, and that's good because we want to put a little base of something down at the bottom. So in this case, it's a mixture of of uh, sh uh, sheep manure and peat moss, and we'll just put a couple of handfuls in the bottom of the hole. Okay, that should be enough. Now, try to get this out of the pot without doing too much damage to the root system. It needs a little more persuasion. There we go. Okay, that's a really good height. So we're just proud of this by about an inch, and I know that'll that'll settle down as this soil underneath compacts over time. So now that's a good spot. Now even though the the pot is or is or uh, is plumb to the hole, the tree is more important. So I'm going to let the the root section lean a little bit toward the camera. Now we'll get some of our good soil in here. Okay, so that's nice and stable. We mix in just a little bit of our topsoil. Mix that by hand all the way around. It's a good opportunity also to remove any uh, roots from your topsoil. Okay. Okay, so now we have a nice level surface. The tree is just a little bit higher, so I'm going to use the remaining brick clay and the sods to make a little berm around the low side, and that way when we water it, it'll hold water. At least for the next uh, few, uh, next year or so, until we get our uh, well set up, we'll have to have these little, little uh, reservoirs around the edge of these plantings to ensure that they get enough water. There we go. That's the planting of the black walnut, and it's one of four that we planted. So we've planted four black walnuts and the gala apple tree. So that's today's uh, gardening segment. Join us again in the next episode when the steel roofing and wall sheathing arrives and we get back to building the homestead shop.